days have really been all about Call of Duty World War II and the Attack of the Undead update. On Tuesday, we were actually out at Sledgehammer Games. We ended up debuting that kind of stuff on our live stream during the day over on Twitch and on YouTube here. But then at night, we ended up talking about all the weapons, showcasing them all for you guys with raw gameplay and all that kind of stuff that if you guys wanted to check those out, you could get a first-hand experience of how they'd play out. You can get a little look in at what they would be like in game. And so the whole purpose of that was kind of just seeing if you wanted to go for it, kind of helping you decide which ones you wanted to go for. Yesterday, we recapped everything that changed, and that was an absolutely massive update and a massive video. So if you guys checked that one out in its entirety, well, firstly, thank you, because again, it was absolutely incredibly in-depth and there was so much to talk about. But today, we're going to be taking a look at not just a recap, but sort of giving you guys a little bit of a power ranking for the new weapons within Call of Duty World War II. Again, with this one, we're not really going to be giving anything regarding the two melee weapons, that being the Fire Axe and then the Claymore Sword, simply because, well, they're reskins of melee weapons. But as for the other ones, where do they stack up? Which ones should you really go for? And which ones are the best, which are the worst? And a little bit of a sort of recommendation on some class setups to run or some attachments to run for these. So that said, we're going to be taking a look at the DLC weapons that were released on Tuesday from worst to best here within this one. First things first, a little disclaimer. Yes, this is all going to be my own personal preference and a little bit of a bias of a time from what I had playing in the matches and with each of the weapons. So this might be a little bit different than that of your recommendations for this. So again, if you guys have any differences, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below, or perhaps you agree with them, which would be awesome if we can hit this right on the head, but that's probably not going to happen. Starting us off at number five, though, is what I believe firmly is the blunderbuss, that being the brand new shotgun. If you guys played Advanced Warfare, you know what the blunderbuss is like, and it's pretty much the same exact thing within Call of Duty World War II. It's a single shot shotgun weapon that is, of course, very nice in the sense that it's a fun weapon to use if you want to break away from the traditional mold, but in terms of sheer practicality, it's not the best one. You'd much rather be better off taking a combat shotgun or even something like the M30 or the sawed off. Something like that would be a lot more practical than that of the blunderbuss if you're trying to actually use it for the sake of actually beating out a team or going out on a slaying spree. That's something the blunderbuss is not necessarily categorized for that simply because it is again single shot and the reload on each takes a little bit of time before you can end up getting back in the action. As for the damage itself, it's nice because it is a one shot from a various number of ranges, but it is also something that does not have a super long range as say a rifle bullet would have with the M30. So you're not guaranteed that kill, you can still get hit markers and in some of the footage you'll probably actually see I do get hit markers with this thing, but realistically, I think that if you don't even have hustle on this, it might not be worth going for all that much to begin with, other than once again, just that fun factor and trying to break away from the standard mold that you may have already in your mind for how you want to play the game. Now, admittedly, the top four actually become a little bit really down to personal preference, I think, and they really all come close to each other for some various things that, again, you'll see here throughout this video. So the next one that I want to talk about, number four, is the PTRS-41, which might sound weird. I absolutely love this weapon and of course being that it is number four it is kind of a low placing compared to the other ones but that's simply because it is one a sniper which in a lot of situations you might not necessarily be at the advantage unless you're absolutely a monster with a sniper to which maybe you will be but it's a little bit clunkier of a sniper than that of what we've seen in previous weapons so we end up seeing that the car 98k we end up seeing that the m1903 and the type 38 those kind of weapons are really all right around that same mobility factor where the relative lightweight compared to some of the other weapons like an LMG or something similar, but they also have a nice ADS time that makes them relatively even depending on these circumstances and of course some variables other than that that give one maybe a slight competitive edge over the other, but they all relatively are very similar in those aspects. But when you take a look at the PTRS, it's a very clunky weapon compared to those because the mobility is a little bit lower as well as the ADS time is a tad slower, which kind of levels it out to where it actually is in real life, an anti-tank weapon. So it is something that as a standard sniper rifle, it's a little bit outclassing those of the other ones. And that is where you sort of see this trade off as well, because it's a one shot pretty much anywhere on the body. I talked to Rambo at Sledgehammer, Rambo Ray, for those of you guys that know the XCOD Pro, who works on weapons a lot within the game. And he was saying that it is a one shot to the body anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's a chest and up, it can be a one shot anywhere. And it has a high level of the FMJ ability. So it can wall bang things with relative ease, because again, it's an anti-tank rifle. It's meant to be powerful. 
powerful. So you get those trade-offs in the sense where it is a one-shot, yes, but you lack in mobility and a little bit of that speed that you may have if you are somebody that is, say, a quick scoper or somebody that likes to be a little bit more of a mobile sniper. So this one is probably more so suited towards those of the more stationary snipers, the people that really want to just play an actual sniper play style where you're not really running around all that much. But again, it can be done. But in that sense, I'm somebody that is a run gun type of player. So I like to be on the move. I like to be able to challenge myself a little bit in the sense of maybe quick scoping a little bit here and there. But the PTRS is just slightly a peg down from the mobility of that of what we'll see with number three, that being the lever action. So the lever action is again, the next sniper that we end up getting here with this one. And this is where again, it kind of comes down to preference and a little bit of that trade off because you're not guaranteed a one shot with everything. It does come down to the same standard damage properties that all the other snipers have. But the thing that really is nice about the lever action is that it has a high mobility compared to that of the PTR as well as the ADS time is very similar to that of say the ballista in Black Ops 2. It has a very high speed for that ADS and therefore it is a quick scopers dream in a sense. But it also again has that trade off where you have to be accurate. You have to hit your shots. But if you can, you can pull off some nice things. And that was something that even just playing a few games with it out at Sledgehammer after I unlocked it, it was absolutely fantastic. In that sense where you can be accurate, you can pull off some nice little clips. Even myself, who's not really necessarily a sniper, I was pulling off a couple of triples, a couple of quads, that kind of stuff, because it was just relatively easy to use, but it was also fun. So it was a nice little way to kind of add both of those things together, but it also was a powerhouse in the sense that I could clean house with it with relative ease. So for that, just as a direct comparison to the PTRS, I think that the lever action has a slight leg above that of the PTRS, but again, they're both so close that it really comes down to which one you may prefer. Now, getting into the last two, this is where I think there might be some breakaway because I might hold an unpopular opinion here at this one, but I think I'm gonna put the Nambu type to the SMG at the number two spot here at this one. Now, this is one that again, talking to Rambo a little bit, this was actually developed and designed to be that of a rival for the PPSH. Now, the PPSH is still, even just about seven months into the game's life cycle now, the PPSH is still that meta weapon that really hasn't had all that much competition. Sure, there was the MP40 earlier on in the year. Sure, the Sterling is very close to the Grease Gun and can offer in some capacity a little bit of competition to the PPSH, but the PPSH itself is still relatively untouched in that meta game where everybody uses it. So in order to combat that, they ended up making a weapon that could very much so directly compare that of the PPSH, and that is where we got the Nambu Type 2. So this is one that really has a relatively decent fire rate. I guess I wouldn't call it anything crazy. The recoil is manageable. You need a grip on it for sure in order to make it a laser beam, but it's something that is, again, a high mobility weapon. And really, I can see the comparison to it. And for that, I'm intrigued, but I don't know if I'm necessarily a fan entirely of the weapon just yet. Again, I've played around a little bit with it and it may grow on me a little bit further, but I feel like there are some things with the damage properties that it could be a little bit better. I felt like when I was using this, I got a lot of hit markers and therefore it might've turned me off a little bit to the weapon itself. And therefore maybe say in a direct head to head, I'd still maybe choose the PPSH, but I don't know if it's something with the damage or the range drop off or whatever it may be. Again, I haven't really played all that much just yet to really pick it down as to what it would be entirely. But there just seems something off with the weapon in the sense that at times it felt like I could melt, but at times it also felt like I was shooting peas or marshmallows. So that balance, I think you need to find for yourself and try and maybe work it out in your own. But still overall, I think that because it is an SMG, because it does have that overall higher mobility compared to say a sniper or a shotgun that is a one shot that takes forever to reload. I think this is still going to come in at the number two spot, which again, may be a slight unpopular opinion here out of these weapons. But that kind of leads me then into a little bit more of justifying why we need to talk about number one, because I feel like it might be that unsung hero. Number one, the only weapon we have left is that of the Stinger or the M1919, the variation of that. I know some people have been pointing out that it is very similar to that of the Browning, but again, the Stinger is that of the new LMG, which is a two shot kill at pretty much any range. The only downside, and it is a kind of big downside and caveat, but if you can get over it, it's absolutely fantastic. And that caveat being, of course, the mobility. It's an LMG, it's a very beefy and bulky one as well, so it's very similar to that of the Bren at launch whenever we end up talking about that. And in, at launch of World War II, it really did turn out to be a weapon that really, if you could get over that mobility factor, it was absolutely insane. Again, a two shot at any range with the Bren was fantastic. So this kind of follows in the footstep of that in the sense that it is an absolute powerhouse that'll tear you to shreds if you can be accurate if you can be a little bit more mobile with it instead of just say posting up on a head glitch or 
If that is something that suits your fancy, well, I mean, I guess you can. I wouldn't recommend that, and I wouldn't advocate for that kind of playstyle, just because, to me, I find that incredibly boring, but it is something that, if you can be a little bit more mobile with it, if you can make up for those sort of things, then, of course, it is definitely going to be nice. You can toss it on an infantry or an airborne where you have some more strafing speed or yours overall a little bit faster. You can end up throwing a quick draw on a grip on it or something like that to make your ADS a little bit better, and, of course, other things that you can do to kind of suit that more so mobile playstyle. The one thing that is absolutely beautiful though is not only again it's a two shot at any range pretty much is that it also comes with a ton of ammo so unless you're on an absolute massive tear if you're accurate well you don't really ever need to pick up ammo again you can take something more so suited as a basic training you don't need to run an extended mags all that kind of stuff and so therefore it to me is one of those survivalist weapons that really works out quite well if you can accommodate it to a little bit more again of a mobile playstyle. that's simply just me simply because i like to move around i like to do that but overall a two shot weapon that has a ton of ammo well that's a very dangerous combo so that's we're gonna wrap it up i think though that is in my books the five new ranged weapons within call of duty world war ii from worst to best of course yours may completely differ from this list and that's totally cool and if so let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below why or why not do you agree with this is there anything in particular you would change out out of this sort of list love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below a little conversation with this no real right or wrong answer just giving you my opinions on the game that i have played thus far with all of them so of course let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below but hopefully you guys enjoyed if you guys did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding call of duty world war ii any updates best class ups, tips tricks news information all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel so if any of that interests you make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing and if you guys want to follow me over on twitter that's the best place to connect me outside of youtube practically live on twitter so if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be link is down there in the description below and also if you guys want to follow me over on instagram trying to get more active over there as well i do a lot of traveling so if you guys want to stay up to date with all that kind of stuff again that's a great spot to do so but all that said and out of the way hopefully you guys have a fantastic day thank you all so much for watching on an espresso take care and peace